let's talk about uh, Amazon Elastic Load Balancer. I'm going to do a deep dive into this session. Let's go and see, let's go and set up a Elastic Load Balancer with complete demo. ELB is one of the important services in Amazon Web Services. Let's first go through the features and benefits of ELB and followed by we'll have a demo on it. Uh, this is a small illustration of uh, Elastic Load Balancer. So in this diagram, ELB is uh, load balancing the applications which are running on EC2 instances across uh, two different zones. The basic use cases for uh, load balancer is we can horizontally scale our applications by adding more and more EC2 instances in this case. We also can make our applications highly available because uh, we are deploying uh, our applications across uh, different zones and in case of a zone failure your application will be still up and running and it won't there won't be any downtime for that that's the second use case of uh, using elastic load balancer let's see the benefits of elb uh, particularly in amazon web services primarily elb works it is bound to a specific vpc it can load balance ec2 instances which are sitting in same vpc it can't load balance EC2 instances across multiple VPCs, even it can't load balance EC2 instances across different regions actually. So if you have a use case where you want to load balance across different regions, we can do that with help of uh, Route 53. And ELB is fully managed service. It is completely managed by Amazon Web Services. It comes as a pass model platform as a service. Uh, we also can secure elastic load balances using security groups while launching uh, elb we can assign security group and we can completely secure the elastic load balancer those things we'll be seeing in the demo elb also performs health checks on ec2 instances its load balancing to make sure it is routing the traffic only to the healthy instances it also supports uh, ssl terminations in sense when we configure uh, HTTPS using SSL certificates. Generally, a uh, client sends a HTTPS request to the server, and the same request comes to ELB. In ELB, we can close that SSL connection. We call this one as uh, SSL termination. We can close the connection, we can decrypt the data, and we can pass on that information to the web servers. We also can do this SSL termination on web servers, but SSL termination is an expensive process. It can bring spikes in CPU. So it is recommended to do SSL terminations on ELB, not on your web servers where it's running on EC2 instances. Let's learn all these concepts with help of a demo. I am in my AWS management console. Uh, we can find elastic load balancers under EC2. Let's go there. Before uh, setting up elastic load balancers, I want to prepare a couple of ECT instances across uh, different availability zones. Let's quickly go and launch instances there. I'm going with Amazon Linux. To be under free limits, uh, I'm going with this T2 Micro. I want one instance and I'm keeping all the examples simple. I'm putting all my uh, details into default VPC where default VPC has uh, uh, multiple public subnets and it's ready to work kind of subnet and vpc for us so i want to install apache server on this i want to use user data in this case i have prepared a small script which is going to install apache on your linux machine and also it is going to uh, keep a small index.html file for our testing purpose uh, let's grab the script this is a very simple shell script uh, which is installing Apache on your uh, Linux machine and using this echo I am sending this content to this index.html. Uh, this is the deployment directory for Apache. I am creating this new file with this content on that. I am enabling HTTPD on reboot. In case your uh, AC2 instance reboots it automatically starts uh, Apache server and finally I am starting this Apache server for us. Let's keep that script here I'm pasting that script as it is user data is a way to execute scripts at launch time and uh, this script is executed when this ec2 instance launches 
now let's go and check the storage part okay so number of instances zero let's make it one so i can't keep two because right if i put two here both will be into a same availability zone okay so let me choose this also one i want that to be in one a other one let's keep it in one b let's repeat this example one more time for a different ec2 instance there okay storage i'm just fine with 8 gb of storage here tax better to add tax i'm calling this one as a web server one security group i want to choose a group which accepts all traffic i don't have any a specific group requirements specific uh, security rule requirements in this case review and launch it so i'm going with my one key pair launch it so let this machine come up before this machine comes up right i want to launch one more into a different zone it is in 1a let's launch one more in 1b because it will be highly available for us launch instance amazon linux so instance details i want one instance a default vpc and coming to subnet i want this one to be in 1b for high availability and to the end right let's copy paste that uh, user data script i'm slightly changing this i want to say response from server 2 because uh, when we put a load balancer in front of these two instances we can clearly see which server is responding back to us and even don't forget to make sure every ec2 has a public ip enabled so that's also required for this demo storage tags let's name it let's call this one as uh, web server 2 security group so i'm going with the previous one which allows all traffic for us review launch it coming to key pair i'm selecting same key pair launch the server let's go to instances there let me check are we able to access web server one with help of its public ip yes it says a response from server one likewise let's also check a web server 2 i think it should work for web server 2 also grab its public ip here maybe it's taking a little while to come up it should work it should say response from web server 2 so meanwhile let's go and set up elastic load balancer you can find elastic load balancer under ec2 itself so this is the section go to load balancers let's go and create a new load balancer here so currently as of today amazon has three different types of load balancers one is application load balancer network load balancer and the classic load balancer our demo is on classic load balancer let's create that let's also name it I'm calling it as uh, Java Home Cloud ELB. All my instances are kept in default VPC and we should make sure this ELB also sits in the same network. As I said, right, ELBs are born with VPC. So it can load balance EC2 instances only within the same VPC. And the next option is create an internal load balancer. When you say yes, this load balancer is not exposed to internet. It, it is going to be something intranet. So it's going to load balance applications which are which works within your network. But in this demo, I want to expose this to internet. I'm not selecting this box. If you uncheck, it is going to be an internet-based load balancer. We can access it from our internet. Next one, enable advanced VPC configuration. Please select this. And coming to load balancer protocol. I want to run my load balancer on HTTP. If you have SSL certificate, if you want to secure your uh, HTTP connections, then we should go with HTTPS. For this demo, I'm going with HTTP because I don't have any SSL certificate in my case. 
I want to run this on 80 port number. So I'm leaving it as 80. Coming to instance protocol, even my web server, the one which we installed on EC2 instances, they are listening to 80 port and HTTP protocol. So both the cases, it's HTTP and 8080. And next we have subnet selections. Uh, this option comes only when you enable this. Okay, so that's the reason we enabled it. Now tell what are the subnets you want to use for adding your EC2 instances. We kept EC2 instances in both the subnets. I want both. Then go and say uh, security groups. As I said, right, we can secure ELBs using uh, security groups. Now again, I'm just going with uh, allow all kind of stuff. So configure security group settings. This is empty because we didn't choose HTTPS as an option in case of load balancer protocol. Health checks. ELB is going to perform health checks on EC2 instances to make sure it is routing traffic only to healthy instances. If there is a request coming from the client, it cannot route traffic to unhealthy instance because the client might face errors with those instances. The ping protocol. So your application runs on EC2. That application, right, is running on Apache, which is using HTTP protocol. And the port number of Apache is 80. And the ping path. On Apache, if you guys remember, we kept index.html. So in your case, right, it might be a different file. In my case, it is index.html. It can be any path where we use this path for making sure this particular application is healthy on this machine. And coming to advanced details, response timeout basically two seconds is a where application should respond within two seconds any click you do on the application that has to respond within two seconds and the health check intervals why because we have to do this health checks at regular intervals of time to make sure your, your system is still healthy and if you reduce this it can increase a load on your server it, it all depends on your application nature I'm going with 10 seconds. Unhealthy threshold. If two consecutive checks fails, the machine is marked as unhealthy and that machine is taken out of service. And again, when it becomes healthy, right, we should bring that ECT instance into service. That is the healthy threshold. I'm again bringing down to two. If two consecutive checks succeeds, right, unhealthy instance comes into service saying it is healthy let's go and add ec2 instances so in our case we want to add web server 1 web server 2 okay we see a couple of options here enable cross zone load balancing so what is this cross zone load balancing it works like this if cross zone load balancing is enabled elb distributes the load across all the instances evenly so every instance across any zone gets same size of load if we uncheck this one how it works is it will route 50 percent of traffic to zone one and 50 percent of traffic to zone two in sense let's say zone one has 10 instances zone two has 20 instances zone one gets 50 percent meaning 10 instances handling 50 percent of traffic and remaining 20 instances handling the remaining 50% of the traffic. So in this case, right, there is a heavy load on the servers in AZ1 because 10 servers handling 50%, 20 servers in zone 2 handling 50%. That is how that cross zone load balancing works. So if you enable this one, it evenly distributes load across each and every EC2 instance. And coming to connection draining, at cases, uh, your instance may be very slow, not responding, and your ELB finds that instance as unhealthy. In such cases, it should take this instance out of service. Before taking this instance out of service, this instance might be having current open connections. We should give some time for that machine to complete its current open connections. Then eventually we have to take this instance out of service that is called as connection draining period here so in this case default is 300 seconds which is five minutes we are giving five minutes of time for unhealthy machine to complete its pending work yeah, when machine enters into connection draining period 
it won't accept new connections these things i am reducing these things again depends on your application let's add tags to this name some elb demo it's always good to add tags it will be easy for you guys to track your resources and even it will be easy for you guys to know why you created it so review page if you want to change anything in this case you can go and edit and change it otherwise go and create it the elastic load balancer is successfully created for us let's close this and these are the details about elb this is the dns name using which we can access our elb load balancer coming to instances we added a couple of instances currently its status is out of service in the background elb is performing health checks once elb finds these two instances healthy it brings them into service and status becomes in service at any point of time we can edit this we can add new instances we also can remove the existing instances from the elb if you see the status now it is in service we can go to description tab grab this dns record that's a url that's the endpoint of a elastic load balancer let's open a new tab here put it there and click enter see now the response is coming from server 2 correct we are hitting elb and elb is routing the traffic to server 2 let's try to refresh now server 1 is responding refresh server 2 is responding so it's kind of doing round robin for us elb as of today classic load balance as of today supports only round robin algorithm for example our one of our server stops still your customers won't face any downtime because elb takes care of routing those requests to a healthy server let me go and stop web server one now for demo purpose your application won't become offline because still there is one more server which is up and running this server can handle all the requests coming from your client see now it is routing the traffic to only server 2 i'm refreshing my page it is routing traffic only to server 2 because it is not routing traffic to server 1 it is unhealthy now once your server 1 becomes healthy like this so it it keeps checking the health of your web server one when it finds this server healthy again it brings this server back to service and it starts routing traffic to server one as well see now web server one is in running state let's go to elb check instances see both are let me refresh and see that yeah both are in service now let's refresh yeah now see the second server i mean the server one early it was unhealthy now it has become healthy it is automatically brought into the service by your elastic load balancer we do have a concept of uh, stickiness in elb let me explain that for you let's go to description page uh, this one uh, we have a uh, stickiness disabled we can even enable this stickiness the basic idea is uh, when you enable stickiness a request from a specific client is bound with same server i'm repeating it when stickiness is enabled when a request is coming from a specific client all the requests from the client is routed to same web server maybe a case where we are maintaining the state of uh, client in the web server level and I want to route all my traffic from same client to same server. In such cases, we can go and enable this stickiness. Let me show that for you. Currently, it's disabled. Uh, I'm going with uh, second option and expiration period. Let me keep it as uh, 30 seconds. What exactly it means is in the background, it is going to create a cookie. Cookie is a small information using which your uh, elb tracks the client details 
So based on that, it routes all the traffic from that client to SAM server. Save it. So once we save it, let's say I am a client sending a first request to my web server, to my ELB. My first request is handled by server one and all my subsequent requests is also handled by server one. So this is called as stickiness. I'm refreshing my page. See, everything is getting into server one itself because my first request handled by server one and all my subsequent requests will go to same server. This is managed by your elastic load balancer. If I go and disable this, let me disable and come back to this and start refreshing a page. See that now again, it is routing the traffic across different EC2 instances. So that is how stickiness works.